Hello everybody, this is Hocus and welcome to episode one of a brand new Let's Play Minecraft series. The question you would like to ask right now is, Hocus, how, at the beginning of episode one, do you have all of this nice gear and all of these things set up in your world? Well, dear viewer, that is a wonderful question and one that I'll be very happy to answer with an imminent 100 days style montage. But just before we jump into that montage, please remember to drop a like if you enjoy this video. And of course, if you are new here, then please consider subscribing to stay tuned to this series and more awesome Minecraft content. According to Minecraft, this is day zero. So I'm gonna go with that. As with any other Minecraft world, I got things started by punching wood. Using my new resources, I crafted my first crafting table, first pickaxe, and first axe. After establishing myself a little, I went to check out a campfire that I could see in the distance. Turns out it was a very small village, which is amazing to have so close to spawn and will be important down the line. As the sun began to set, I went to collect some sugarcane and unfortunately had to spend the night in a boat on the ocean, but I couldn't get any rest as I was being pestered by drowned all night. As the sun rose on day one, I made it my goal to get over the mountain and establish somewhere to call base. I wanted to craft a bed, but could only see goats and horses. Eventually, I managed to upgrade to a stone pickaxe and got my hands on my first furnace. I killed some of the local fauna for nutritional purposes before spotting some sheep. I mined some raw iron, smelted it, crafted some shears using the ingots, sheared some sheep, crafted a bed, and had a comfy night sleeping in my new warm bed. Day two saw me plant my first sapling and begin a small wheat farm in my new base area. I then crafted a chest so that I could begin keeping my items in a centralized location and moved my utility blocks to be within the same area. The day flew by and as the sun was beginning to set, I prepared myself to dig a mine on day three. I wanted to kickstart day three by grabbing some spruce saplings and almost froze to death in powder snow. Unfortunately, this will become a theme throughout this montage. I mined some more iron shortly before planting the spruce sapling I'd almost died for. Then I began to dig the mine and it was here that I mined my first copper ore. The digging came to a point that required a water bucket, but by the time I had made it back to the surface, it was night, so I went to sleep. Day four began with my first creeper confrontation and I was immediately forced into action. After triumphing over the green foe, I crafted more torches and a sword for our spelunking expedition. I dropped into the cave and harvested the ores I could find. However, to go deeper, I would need to resurface and prepare a little more than I already had. Wood was a priority for me to spelunk successfully. Chopping those trees reminded me to limit tree growth in our farm to make things a little easier to cut, so I took care of that. Following this, I harvested my first full wheat growth and achieved the Isn't It Iron Pick advancement. On top of the iron pickaxe, I crafted full iron armor and a shield. I was ready to spelunk. As I descended into the cave, I was greeted by Minecraft's fiercest enemy, the baby zombie, and the two of us engaged in an epic battle to the death. After showing the baby zombie that it was no match for me, I continued to mine some ores and found my first diamonds. Day six came thick and fast in the form of an onslaught of undead mobs. It seemed as though there was an overwhelming amount to explore in the 1.18 caves. Not that this was a bad thing at all, I saw some magical looking glow squid prior to returning to the surface. I began smelting my ores, planted a potato that I had looted and chopped some trees before calling it a night. The plan for day seven was to find cows and bring them back to base. I would then throw together a sugarcane farm if there were enough minutes in the Minecraft day. After locating some cows, I terrified them into submission by consuming cooked steak right before their eyes. I fenced the cows in after returning to my base area with them. Following this, I built a pathetic sugarcane farm and harvested some more wood. Quick note, this will be the last time that I'll make mention of the menial tasks I'm doing around the base since it becomes repetitive after a while. I finished the day off by completing my set of iron armor with an iron helmet, which means I must have been mistaken earlier when I stated that we had crafted full iron armor. Silly me. On day eight, I encountered my very first pillager raid party and decided to just run away. 
I thought that this would be a good time to head out on a boat and explore the surrounding area, as well as grabbing more sugarcane to make my farm less pathetic. I came across two sunken shipwrecks. The first containing nothing remarkable, but the second was able to provide me with bamboo and a treasure map. Night began to fall whilst exploring the second wreck, so I slept aboard the remains of the ship. On day 9, I was finally able to grab some more sugarcane. I figured that it would be a good time to follow up on that treasure map, so I located the spot marked by the X on the map. I had to sacrifice some items to loot the treasure chest, but it was certainly worth it. Whilst on my mission for treasure, I came across another shipwreck that contained a different treasure map and, once again, located the treasure. Following this pair of bountiful plunders, I headed home and went to bed. When I say, I went home, what I meant is that I got as far as possible before nightfall and chucked a bed down. I still had a trek over the mountain to complete. This is where things went pear-shaped and I found myself more than neck deep in powder snow again. I survived again and went home to expand the sugarcane farm. To stick with the theme of expansion, I then spent the remainder of the day making the cow pen larger. The rain dried up on the morning of day 11 and it was time to deepen the mine. On the way down to bedrock, I found my first dungeon, a spider spawner. I took the mine down to y equals negative 58. This is supposed to be a good level to find diamond at, but I'm not sure if branch mining is still effective. On day 12, I began a simple bamboo farm beside the cow pen. I once again expanded the sugarcane farm and found an amethyst geode whilst branch mining. I couldn't seem to figure out how to replant the amethyst. I need to look into this. Today was the day that I crafted my first diamond tool in the form of a diamond pickaxe. Back down in the caves, I was involved in a scary incident involving a zombie and a creeper, but fortunately came out unscathed. However, it was the 13th day, an unlucky number, and my luck soon ran out. My first death came after finding myself in a precarious position whilst trying to cheese enderman kills. Rest in peace, Hocus. There wasn't much else to do on day 14, but head back down to the deadly depths and retrieve my items. I did not want to lose that diamond pick. There were a few close calls on this mission, but I managed to pull through. I was now starting to consider the nether as a next step and wanted to grab some obsidian to make a portal. It was tough to find a lava pool, but whilst exploring, I found a ruined portal. Perfect. I mined some obsidian and opened the chest, but it contained items of little interest. Before returning to base, I explored the nearby village, but again, there was not much to find of any interest. After sunrise on day 16, I clambered back to base. I built a portal to check out my nether spawn, and it was not ideal. I returned to the overworld and tried branch mining again, this time at Y level 8 to avoid deep slate. I quickly became bored and wanted more diamonds, so I tried Y equals negative 58 again. For the majority of day 17, I continued to branch mine, but it seemed like such a fruitless task. After later resurfacing, I expanded the crop farm to grow potatoes. They'd be a good early game food source if I could grow enough. With diamonds so tough to mine, it was time to change our approach. I was now preparing to stay in the village that we had discovered on day zero for a while. I crafted a bunch of hoes and gathered crops to grow so I was able to feed the villagers. Before sleeping, I sheared the sheep so that I could craft more beds to allow the population of the village to grow. On day 19, I set off for the village knowing that I'd be away from the base for a while. I was once again apprehended by my arch nemesis, Powder Snow. I came out alive once more and crafted a little boat to cross the water to the village. Upon arrival, I set up a tree farm, a bamboo farm, and a wheat slash potato farm. These would all help with trading and breeding. The villagers needed more beds and food for the population to grow, so I provided them with these things. I also converted a couple of the villagers to Fletchers so that I could trade sticks for emeralds. What a deal! I traded with the Fletchers on day 21 in order to begin creating a stash of emeralds. I then converted another villager. This time, I was looking for an armorer. After trading with the armorer for a while, I had so much armor. There isn't much to report on day 22 other than the fact, and this is quite a big fact, that I was able to trade for my first two pieces of diamond gear. On day 23, I realized that I would need more beds and therefore more wool, so I headed out to search for sheep. I was ambushed by another pillager raid party that I subsequently ran from. As I was escaping, I stumbled upon another dungeon, but didn't have time to loot it. I eventually found sheep and then happened across my base. I stayed there for the night. On the morning of day 24, I set off for the village once again, 
I used the wool that we now had to craft beds, which I then placed down for the villagers. I had acquired so much useless armor at this point that I began smelting it down in order to recycle it. Before the end of the day, I was able to trade for a diamond helmet. All I had written down for day 25 was kept village ticking over. That was it, my only note for the day. So it seems as though nothing much of significance happened on day 25. Day 26, however, did have some significance. On this day, I was able to trade for a diamond chest plate, which meant that I had a full set of diamond armor. Towards the end of the day, the villagers gave birth to their first child since my arrival. My contributions to the village were starting to pay dividends. This theme was continued the following day as the population of the village continued to grow. With the babies in the village aging quickly, one of them eventually grew up to take the weaponsmith role. The iron axe trade became very useful as I'd only bought a limited number of axes along with me and I was chopping a lot of wood. On day 29, I attempted to level the weaponsmith, but the trades offered weren't providing them with much experience, unfortunately. On the bright side, more baby villagers were being born. Deja Vu strikes on day 30, as similarly to day 25, I quote unquote, kept the village ticking over. Although I did also allude to potentially losing a villager to zombification on this day, but I couldn't find any evidence of this in the footage. I was back to making progress again the following day as I was able to trade for a diamond axe. I decided to use it as my main weapon going forward after some internal debate. With all of the items that we had acquired from the villagers, it was time to start thinking about wrapping up my stay here. I bought a bow and some arrows to round off my dragon fighting loadout. I was planning to return to base today on day 32. Before I left the village, I was witness to a very sad incident involving an iron golem and a spruce tree. Rest in peace, iron golem. Then, shortly after leaving the village, I was yet again swallowed by powder snow. When will I learn? Of course, I survived and made it to bed just in time to avoid the horrors of the night. On the morning of day 33, I changed into my new diamond armor. It was time to take on the nether. I crafted a shield, one final aid against hell, and entered the portal. I got off to a great start and was able to slay a ghast, but there are much scarier mobs in this demented dimension. I was able to rapidly locate a fortress and began farming blaze rods at the first spawner I found. I gathered up 15 blaze rods and decided to head back towards the portal. I battled my way homebound and eventually my shield broke. At this point, I was beginning to fear for my life. I stumbled upon a soul sand valley and this was the final biome required to achieve hot tourist destination. Once closer to the portal, I remembered that I'd need some ender pearls. The warped forest biome is the perfect place to farm them. I spent the majority of day 35 farming ender pearls before heading back to the overworld. Safe at last. The pillagers were out to get me again, but I, this time, combated them with fire. I used the remainder of this day to chill out after a stressful nether experience. After all, we'll soon be off to fight the ender dragon. Day 37 turned out to be another chill day. I simply brought some sheep back to the base area and penned them in. It was then time to get serious. I had a dragon fight to prepare for. I made sure my inventory was in good nick before following the path indicated by the eye of Ender. During my journey, a zombie attack forced me to sleep on the ocean floor. On day 39, I continued following the Eye of Ender trail and eventually found the stronghold below an ocean. This was a little annoying as it makes it slightly more difficult to access it, especially when you forget to bring a shovel. From here, there was only one thing left to do. Conquer the end.
longer would the dragon's reign of terror over the end continue. I was victorious. The end is mine. It was time on day 40 to continue deeper into the end in search of the fabled Elytra. A set of wings that will allow us to glide around our world at supersonic speeds. Whilst I had the chance, I harvested some chorus plants to take back to the overworld with me. Bridging over the void was super scary, but boy was I relieved to see an end city with a ship once I made it across the emptiness. Shortly after this discovery, I got my hands on my first elytra, baby. And there's your answer. I'm sure by now that you've seen enough Minecraft Let's Play series to know what is expected within the first few episodes. My goal was to defeat the Ender Dragon and to grab an Elytra, all of which was completed within 40 Minecraft days. Now we are at a point that allows us to progress at a much faster pace episode to episode and cuts out all of the grindy early game content you've probably seen countless times already. But things are not going to end just yet. Before the end of this very first episode, I would like to build something over here at the base area because during the first 40 days, we barely built anything of substance. And as the rain begins to pour again on our Minecraft world, this is what we have so far. I cannot take full credit for the direction in which this build is going. I'm taking heavy inspiration from a post made by a user called ShinyBlocks on the old Instagram. And I will link that down in the description below if you guys want to check it out for yourself. They have some amazing, inspirational, truly wonderful builds over there. So I definitely would go check it out if I were you. And you can uh, see maybe which image I'm taking my inspiration from. But I'm sure that once this build comes together and comes to life, we are going to have an awesome house on our hands. The weather is now cleared and we've made some decent progress. So I thought I'd check back in with you guys so you can see where things are heading in terms of the house. I have to be a little bit careful here because we do have a raid party off in the distance, but I'm generally just trying to ignore them and hope that they leave the area. But you can see that we've decided to go with crimson wood for the roof. So some of the materials used in the picture that I'm referencing, we don't have access to since it's such early game, but the crimson wood really, really pops against the browns that we're using within the build. So I really do think that was a good choice. And then before we press along again, something I just wanted to show you guys is the inside of the house at the moment. I think this looks kind of funny, almost like a movie set, right? We've got the facades and then just complete emptiness behind it all. Final build update before the finished house will be stood right in front of us here. And it, it looks fairly built and done from this side already, I guess. But I'm stood up here analyzing the roof just to see. Can you keep it down? Just to see if it looks okay because it's kind of janky. You can see it extends a bit further this side than it does that. But I think I've done a good job of making it look... Excuse me. Making it look okay. I will say that this side of the build has been much more difficult because there is no reference point. If you took a little bit of time to check out the Instagram post that I linked in the description, then you notice that all of the screenshots are from the front of the build. So I've pretty much just had to wing it at the back and come up with something on my own but uh i would say that although the front is definitely better the back is it, it's not absolutely terrible and i think with uh a little bit more attention to detail and a few a few reworked ideas here we can we can get it looking pretty nice ladies and gentlemen i welcome you back on day number 100 of our survival minecraft let's play world and yes that is correct it's taken me a further 60 days and I'm indicating this on the left side of the screen here with the cursor. Day number 100. A further 60 in-game days to finish development of this build. Which might seem like a long time. But there has been a lot of resource collecting in that time. A lot of fighting off pillager raid parties. And generally just a lot of procrastinating. So before I give you the grand tour here myself let's jump into a little section of some flyby footage so that you guys can get a bit of a better view of the house as a whole And there you have it, the house 
fully completed and ready to be lived in. I am very excited to have this completed and coincidentally to have it done on day 100 as well. Kind of fits the whole 100 days survival theme, although we weren't able to survive the entire 100 days. Day 13 had a small incident, which we'll try to put to the backs of our memories collectively and just forget about it. You'll probably notice that the back of the build has changed since the last update that we did on, on the uh, progress. I decided to get rid of what we had and just mirror the front of the build because the issue I was facing and I pointed it out was that the roof looked very strange because of the way we were trying to mold it together. It just wasn't working. So having this part of the build here that shoots up between the two layers of roof. So we've got this lower layer and this higher layer. It just makes it so much easier to blend the roof together and make things look good. So yeah, like I say, the front of the building looks pretty much the same as the back, apart from the fact that there is no entrance at the back. It's simply a small balcony, which we'll take a closer look at in just a second. So going inside the house, there isn't much going on just yet. I've put the floor down so that we know at which level to start working when we do get around to creating an interior for this place, which should be in a coming episode. Then if we take the two back doors here, and there currently is a bug, I think, with doors in this update. It doesn't actually place them correctly if you place two together. So if we put two down here, for example, they don't join up to make a double door at the moment. So hopefully that gets fixed ASAP. Anyhow, out the back doors here is, like I say, a small little balcony area. Just for design, really, doesn't serve much purpose. I just didn't want to have two entrances looking exactly the same on either side of the build. And then finally, down here in the quote unquote basement area, we have just a temporary setup for all of our storage, our bed, our furnaces, and a few other utility blocks. So what we'll be looking to implement is enchanting, storage, smelting, crafting, you name it, we'll have it and I'll get it all put into this area. I'm also probably going to use the basement as well because there is a good amount of space down here. But overall, very pleased with this build and probably the coolest house I've ever owned in Minecraft, I have to say. All right then, ladies and gentlemen, thank you ever so much for joining me for episode one of our brand new Let's Play Minecraft series. Unfortunately, that will be all for today and for this video, but you can certainly catch more in the future if you are to subscribe today. If you haven't already, make sure to drop a like to show me that you did enjoy this video. That way, I'll know to make more in good time so that you guys can continue to see how we develop the Let's Play world. And finally, if you have any questions, any suggestions, comments, or general feedback for me, please drop a comment down in the comments section below. And I'll be sure to read it, respond to those I feel require a response and essentially just love that communication with you guys so make sure to do that all right then guys like i say take care i'll catch you in the next video until then bye for now